Back here is where we test all the drug samples that come in the lab. Um, so that can be powders, liquids, tablets, capsules, plant material, uh, mushrooms. Um, that's the kind of stuff we test here. We don't test blood or urine samples. That's a toxicology issue. But we do test things that have been in the body cavity. We have three balances. Uh, Michigan drug laws for marijuana, cocaine, and heroin are based on the weight of the substance. So we have to make sure that the weight that we're reporting on is accurate because that's going to determine someone's charges. They're um, verified with a known standard weight on a daily basis. So when we report a weight out, that is the accurate weight. For marijuana samples, um, we're going to do three tests on them. Um, one of the tests that we do is we just place the plant material underneath the stereo microscope, which is um, what this is. And this just magnifies the sample so we can see the plant characteristics that are on it. There are a couple of fake um, plants out there. And if you just saw it in the baggie, the Ziploc baggie, you would think it's marijuana. But until you get under the scope and you look at it, you do the instrumental test and the color test on it, that's when you can determine whether or not it really is marijuana. So just visually, without starting our test, you can't tell on some things whether or not they're marijuana. This is our modified Ducanoid Levine test. You just put a little bit of the sample into a uh, test tube and then take our Ducanoid Levine reagent, place a certain amount into the test tube. That'll let that mix with the marijuana you have so you can kind of grind it in there and mix it up a little bit. Then you want to extract the liquid that you have from this little test tube and transfer it to the other one in my hand. And then you're left with uh, a little sample of what hopefully will be known as the THC, that content in there. Then uh, add a little hydrochloric acid as well. And then the change will go from this color to like a slate gray to a blue, then a purple. So all we really want to see is to make sure that it turns into a purple color, and that'll give us our, that'll confirm that it is, THC definitely is in the uh, sample. So. Or one of the other canadians. One of the, yeah, exactly. So you can see it's starting to turn purple now. So that gives us the confirmation. And then to give like another confirmation, we had chloroform as well. And we have that clear bottom uh, liquid, and then we kind of just mix that in. And we want that bottom layer to turn to purple as well. see the two separate layers and we have a, a slight purple and that's just like a, a, a dual confirmation of the THC. And these are our um, these are gas chromatography mass spectrometry instruments. Um, they're a two-part instrument. The first part of the instrument is going to take a mixture and it's going to separate it into the individual components that make up the mixture. So let's say I would inject um, a sample in the instrument that contains cocaine and heroin. I'm going to see on the first part of my instrumental printout, I'm going to see two peaks. One peak would represent the cocaine, and one peak would represent the heroin. And on the second part of the instrument, these separated components go into the mass spot where they're bombarded by a high beam of energy um, and they fragment. And the pattern they fragment in is reproducible and unique to each component. So it's like a molecule's fingerprint. So cocaine always looks like cocaine, but nothing else looks like cocaine. So everything that comes from the lab, we're going to do this chemical confirmation test on it. Um, on the CSI shows, they run DNA on these, and you can't run DNA on these. So you know, I'll watch it and I'll be like, you can't run DNA on those. But they'll do that on TV because people don't know. But these aren't DNA instruments.